We are still in Mishnah number six of chapter number six. This is the famous 48 ways to get wisdom. And we're up to way number seven. That is Be'anava with humility. One of the ways to earn Torah is with humility. Now, humility is long associated with Torah. Aristides tell us that Mount Sinai wasn't a really tall mountain. It was a small mountain. It was a humble mountain. And that made it worthy of being the mountain upon which Torah was given. The Torah was not given on Mount Everest or even on Mount Kilimanjaro, the high mountains, the lofty mountains, the aloof and arrogant that is a repellent to Torah. Torah flourishes best in and upon the humble. The Talmud tells us that Torah is like water. Water always flows down to the lowest point. It's going to pool within the humble. Talmud tells us that the Torah was given in a wilderness, in a desert. And the way to have the Torah flourish within you is to make yourself like a desert, to humble yourself, to negate yourself, and that renders you worthy of Torah. And of course, the conveyor of Torah, the link between humanity and God to get Torah is Moshe, and he was the humblest of men. The Maharal tells us that the central characteristic to become worthy of earning Torah is humility. But humility is also, I think, misunderstood. A lot of people think, well, what does it mean to be humble? It's to say that I'm nothing and I have no value and I'm not important and I'm not powerful. Humility is not to think that you're small, that you're feeble, that you're incapable and inept. If you are capable, you better realize that you're capable because delusion does not equal humility. Moshe, the humblest of men, he knew that he was the leader of the Jewish people. He knew that Mosaic prophecy, prophecy of Moshe, is supreme to all the other prophecies. How do we know that he knew that? Because the Ramam tells us that there are 13 principles of faith, and one of those 13 principles is to believe about the supremacy of Mosaic prophecy, of prophecy of Moshe, and it's very hard to say that Moshe was a heretic. It's in fact a verse in the Torah that Moshe's prophecy is a different level, qualitatively, than the rest of the other prophets. So Moshe was no heretic. He knew that he had prophecy unmatched by any other Jew, even though Bilaam, the prophet of the Gentiles, he had a similar level of prophecy. But Moshe was really in a class of his own. Yet, he was the humblest of men. So what does it mean to be humble? If you're Moshe, you're the humblest of men. Yet you know that you have the most direct connection to God of anyone. Humility, at its core, is the recognition of God. You have talents. You have unmatched talents. It's a gift from God. You have successes. You have triumphs. It's all aided by God. You have Torah, you have mastery, you have wisdom. Where'd your brain come from? Where did all the tools that you use, where'd they come from? Why were you created? You were created to study Torah. Arrogance, haughtiness, aloofness is when you forget about God. And you become selfish and self-absorbed, and all your triumphs and all your talents and all your successes are all earned by you. Humility is when you take an anti-selfish attitude. You're not there about trying to get recognition or honor for yourself. You want to do what God created you to do. 
And that's it. And you don't divorce yourself from God and say, I'm something independent of God. No, it's just a gift from the Almighty. And when you don't feel like you're, like you're a creator, you're a creation of God, that's humility. And in fact, Moshe, he was someone that was ever looking for honor or recognition. When the Jewish people were on the chopping block, Moshe pleaded, Mecheni na mesivracha, erase me from your book. When Moshe was initially told by God, go save the Jewish people, he said, send Aaron. What he cared about is advancing the mission of God in the world and helping others. Humility is to live a life with full recognition and cognizance of the Creator and to be mission-focused, mission-oriented. The recognition of others doesn't really move the needle. You're not looking for approval of others. Honor and prestige, that's not what you want. What other people think about you doesn't move the needle. When you are wrong, you can admit the truth. When the other guy's right, you could admit the truth. You want to do what's right. You want to do what the Almighty wants, not what garners you more attention, more honor, or more distinction. It's interesting. Sinai is almost like a perfect metaphor for humility. It's the most humble of mountains. The Talmudic shorthand for a humble scholar is a Sinai, a Sinai. And of course, this mountain was used for the most sacred of events, the Sinai Revelation. But where is Sinai now? At the time of the Revelation, you couldn't approach the mountain. Today, there's no holiness associated with Sinai. In fact, we don't even know exactly where it is. That's humility. It's there for a purpose. It's there for a task. It's there to fulfill the will of God. And afterwards, that's it. doesn't look for honor. doesn't look for attention. doesn't look for people to laud it. It's able to slip away. Its mission has been completed. Interestingly, we don't, we don't know where Moshe was buried either. He was here for a mission. He fulfilled the mission, and that's it. Stepped back out of the limelight. So that's humility. It's living with the recognition that God created you, everything you have is from God, and everything that you do is you trying to fulfill what God wants of you. And therefore, you don't need recognition. You're not looking for honor. That's not what you're focusing on. That's not what you're pursuing. Now, what's interesting is that even though for yourself, the humble attitude is to not look for recognition, and to not need coddling when it comes to other people, it is our mitzvah to give them recognition and to pump them up and to give them honor and support and to compliment them. Someone else's physical needs are my spiritual needs. That line was coined by the great Rabbi Israel Salanter. Someone else's physical needs is your mitzvah. Someone else's emotional needs, it's your mitzvah. If you want to be humble, you don't look to try to acquire as much honor and and recognition, but you still give that to other people. Now, humility, of course, is a very important characteristic in all areas of life, not just as a way to pursue wisdom. The Talmud tells us if you are arrogant and prideful, you're like an idol that needs to be uprooted. Every person who is prideful and arrogant, God says, so to speak, me and him, we can't live in the same world. There's only one creator. Is it me or is it him? Haughtiness is an act of mutiny and rebellion against God. Only a creator can have pride. If you realize you're a creation, how could you have pride? By definition, if you have pride, if you have arrogance, if you're not humble, 
then you are de facto, tacitly rejecting the notion of being a creator. Rabbi Yonah tells us that the root of all sins is haughtiness. Because the root of all sins is forgetting about God. And therefore, even though with every characteristic that there is, we look for the middle ground, the golden middle. When it comes to humility, we don't take this down the middle approach. You have to go to the opposite extreme. Me'od, me'od haveshval ruach. You should very much exceedingly be humble. That said, humility is something that we need to grow into. My grandfather of blessed memory used to say, humility, it's such a central component of our spiritual edifice, but we need to work on it later on in life. You're working it too early, it could be destructive. And the analogy is, if you have someone who is like a diamond polisher, diamond cutter, you take a rough diamond and it's got a lot of potential, but you want to bring out the sparkle, you got to cut it in the right way, polish it in the right way to bring out the sparkle. But first you have to have the diamond. First you have to discover the diamond. You have to unearth that diamond. If you start cutting before you have the diamond, all you are cutting are the tools that you need to discover those diamonds. And if you ruin those tools, you're going to make it harder to discover those diamonds. Humility is what gives our spiritual lives shine, what makes it shimmer when you polish it and it's scintillating and it's beautiful. That's humility. You've got to start off with making sure you have some diamonds to work with. It's almost like the end cap, you know, the, the, the part that actually contributes to the ultimate shine is what's done at the end. So the ultimate shine of our spiritual lives is going to be the humility. You have to be very careful not to deploy it too early. It's very subtle, the point of humility you realize that you ultimately, you're nothing. You're just a creation of God. You're not a creator. What did Abraham say? I'm nothing. I am but dust and ashes. Aaron and Moshe, we are nothing. David, I am a worm, not a man. The giants of our history They exemplified humility. But if we walk around as simpletons and say, I'm a worm, that may lead us to some place that we don't want to go. And that is a feeling of despair, a feeling of depression, a feeling of ineptitude. That's a big mistake. I'm a diamond. A diamond that was created by Hashem, of course. I'm a diamond with tremendous potential. And if I leave any of my potential unactualized, I'm going to be held to task for it. But it's all the handiwork of God. Take that diamond, cut it, shape it, polish it, but don't forget that you're a diamond. You're a diamond created by the Almighty. That's humility. The great Rabbi Israel Salanter used to say, I don't know if he used to say it, but he definitely said it once. I have the mind of a thousand men. If you take a thousand men, put them together, that equals about the intellectual capacity of one Rabbi Israel Salanter. And the stories about his genius are just totally off the charts. Suppose you do have a mind of a thousand men. Are you supposed to say, I don't have the mind of a thousand men? By doing that, you're rejecting the gift that God gave you. It's a terrible thing. God gave you a gift. And you're not going to appreciate it? You're not going to acknowledge it? You have to acknowledge it. But you recognize where it came from. 
and you recognize that you are supposed to use the gift that the Mighty gave you for the purposes that the Almighty created you for. That attitude is necessary for us to flower and flourish in our spiritual lives, but it is super critical in our pursuit of wisdom. If you believe you know it all, if you believe that you've seen it all, if you're the brightest guy in the room and you've, you've recovered it all, you've mastered everything. You're not going to pursue wisdom. If you forget about God, you're not going to pursue his Torah. Our relationship with Torah is us acknowledging our own fallibility and exposing ourselves to the Almighty's Torah and negating our selfishness and our pettiness to avail, to make room, to vacate room within us for the Almighty and His wisdom. And thus we read, Sinai, that's the mountain upon which Torah can be given. Torah's like water, it's going to pool at the people who say, I'm ready, I'm exposed, I'm like a desert, I have nothing of my own. I want the Almighty's wisdom to fill me up. I thank you for listening to me, which just is Rabbi Walby at gmail.com. I look forward to your questions, your comments, and your feedback.